My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. I'm here at the wonderful Nick Hunter, who's one of our senior engineers of many years and who streams with us pretty often. Currently, I think he's streaming most Mondays through Wednesdays for the foreseeable future. Speaking of foreseeable future, let's talk about our live stream training schedule. So today will be entertaining. Uh, and actually, next couple of days, we're going to be doing a quick mini series on custom functions, which is an interesting topic in FileMaker. It's one a lot of people tend to have questions about. So we're going to be doing custom functions, the final step to excellence with Nick for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Oh, hello. Ah, hey, how are we? We are good. Margaret, you went through everything with everyone so they know what's happening? I, I just I just got to the schedule. So I just talked about the schedule. That's all I've talked about today. Uh, so if you've got other stuff you want to talk about, you are free to go. Yeah, we're continuing to work on the the what they call certification uh, conversation. That'll be the week after. So Nick will be the week after this will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with Nick again. Then Thursday and Friday that week will be kind of the certification conversation. So we're uh, working on that for all of you. Uh, and so Nick, we're going to transfer command to you. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be lurking behind. So if you choke, I can fill in. Right. So don't choke. <laughs> right. So hello, hello everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. So anyway, hello everybody. Thank you for joining today. And uh, uh, so the, today is the first day of this uh, three-day series of uh, uh, custom function, right? So it's um, so we we're going to learn how to build a custom function. Why we need to be uh, to build custom function, or uh, why they're useful, and why you should care about, right? So and. Uh, so this is very important because I don't think there's many, many webinars about the custom function. I never did one, right? I, I don't think so. Do, do we, we, have we, any... we, we did a webinar on custom function, but we did like our top five favorite custom functions, right? Okay. Like, like there's, a, there's one that I like that if you put the dollar amount in like a, and it, it'll spell out in words the money, the amount of money, like $5,126.23. It'll spell that out for you if you put the money in that. That's like a favorite one I like because I, I didn't want to write that myself. But nothing like Nick. So Nick's custom top 10 are going to be different. Yeah, but we, I'm going to, uh, I want people to learn how to build this, you know, to build their own, right? Uh, and then we're going to work through some of mine, my favorites, right? And uh, I have some cool, cool feature. Uh, and um, so some, I think I have two you will use. I'm pretty sure. So, but but first, uh, so I, I, I can show you, by the way, uh, you know, a, a custom function that I love, right? So, yes. so but, but first, what is a custom function? So let's start with the beginning, right? At the beginning, you know, so what is a custom function? Let me share my screen right quick and uh, let's explain what is a custom function. Okay, in FileMaker, right, we have calculations and we have functions, okay? We have functions like, uh, you know, get current date. Okay, that's a function, right? And then we can say uh, plus 10, so, so now we have a function plus something, okay? So, uh, you know, and then we can add this and say like month, right? Of day of this, right? So the month name, for example, of get current date plus 10. So now I have something more evolved. I have a a mix of function together with data, with with constant like the 10. Uh, if I said 50, for example, oh, that would be in February or 60, that would be in March. So sometime you want to do something like this, you say, okay, what is current date plus 60, for example, right? So that's what you do. So you have a mix, right, of uh, different, function. But what happened, right? If you want this many, many times, not just one time, right? You want this many times. You don't just want, you don't, you don't just want to do that uh, once. You know, you, it's something you want to call and go again, again, you're going to call in scripts. You're going to call because otherwise you need to do all the time. So if, for example, you want, or, you know, 
her um, um, what's the name due date, for example. Let's say uh, you have a due date, right? And you want your due date to be this, right? For example, right? If you want this to be the due date, so the number of days. So we have a number of days, and you say I want the due date to be the month name or the due the, the due month, the month due. Okay. Month due, right? It's the month name of the get current date plus the number of days, right? So I'm calling a field. Okay. So I'm calling two function, a get function, a function, and a field. So I'm 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 calling three things here. It's this is a formula, okay? It's a calculation that calls many things, right? So if I do this, I remove this and I put my month due and the number of days, right? And I said the due day is 50. Oh. Uh, it's a, yeah, because I put that a date, should be a text. Sorry for that. Okay, so I put 50. So the month due will be February because I added 50. If I add 100, it's April. Okay, so I have a function, I have a multiple function together, right? That makes that possible, right? But whatever, if I want to use this, uh, you know, all the dates, uh, all the other month, for example, you know, I have, I have another field somewhere, right? And I want to call that from a script, for example, you know, set other month. And we have a script with a set field, right? And we want to set this other month with this, right? And I want to use the same thing. But here I want to hard code it and put hundred, or uh, let's let's put let's put uh, thirty, you know. Let's say that you know other month. So I have a fun I have a, a script that is going to set that field, right? Now this will be set by a script. Boom. Rick Fosnot just sent a question. Okay, so can you use a let statement for terms? Example, today's date plus 10 days or 20 days from invoice date? Question mark. Yeah, you can use whatever you want. It's uh, you know, uh it's for, it's a it's a calculation. So anything I'm going I'm getting there, you know, I'm I, I want to start slowly, right? Like the boss instructed me to do. So I'm following the boss. Uh I want to start no, like a get current date, month name. These are are a basic of the basic of the basic. If you don't know get current date, you you know close file maker is not for you. So, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, if you've been listening to Nick for a while, and you don't know get current date. Yeah, you just yeah. And if if you're not been around, if you're new to the live streams, we do apologize. But yes, that's mandatory. It's mandatory that you know get current date. But I mean, it's a minimum, right? It's uh, you know, it's I mean, it's self-explanatory what this this get this this do is getting the current date, and this is getting the month name of the get current date plus thirty. Okay, so that means I'm getting the 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 date of today. I'm adding thirty days, right? So, so this is my script, right? So I call this, I call this from a script. I call I have the same function for this one in a calculation of the uh, in a, a auto entry calculation. So I'm I'm calling again and again and again. Do you want to write this all the time? Right? Do you want to write this all the time? No, you don't want. You want a custom function. Okay, so let's now build a custom function out of this, okay? So how you do? You go to File, Manage, Custom Function. So here I have plenty, but you know, let's get 
let's get a new one, right? And um, uh, let's say get term date, for example, you know, terms date, you know, it's so a terms, you know, like, you know, uh, no, it's month, sorry. Get terms month. So you name your function. Don't name this with space and stuff like that. I don't even know if you can do that space. Yeah, you can. But anyway, it's not a good technique to do. Uh, use the proper case like this without space, right? Right? So this is the best way to name a function. Uh, capital, small, and for each word, for each word, you start with a, with a capital character, you know, get terms month without space. You can put, uh, you know, all the characters you want, but you cannot put dollars or you cannot put whatever. You cannot start with a space, I think. Yeah, uh, there's certain, yeah. Res res certain reserved characters. Just keep in mind, that's why we yeah. use underscores. And unders we use underscores and we don't use spaces. Yeah, the space, it. you see, uh, if I put space on the front, it's, it's getting rid of it automatically. But if I put a dollar sign, I'm pretty sure it will say, eh, eh. Yeah. Okay. So this is yeah. what you cannot yeah. put. Okay? Yeah. Those are all, there's your list of uh, illegal characters. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Begin with a digit or period, uh, or, or the same name as a function. So I cannot I cannot uh, say uh, this. Uh, I cannot use get current date. I cannot do this. I cannot name a fun a custom function with the name of a custom of of a function. I cannot name a custom function with this one of those names here. Right here, I cannot. Uh, which makes sense, you know. You cannot override override the natural file maker, right? So, you, you, one if you name this, and you can, you can you cannot use and, or you cannot use anything of those things here, right? You cannot use that. Yep. Yep. Okay. This, this, this. You cannot. Okay. So. Get terms month. So here, what we do, we need the, 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 the function I have, right? The function I have here, I mean, the, my construction, my formula, my calculation, I'm calling a FileMaker built-in function, which is a get current date. Is here. I'm calling this. I'm calling the month name, which is here, right? So pretty much I'm building this like this get current dates, right? But I want the month, sorry, I want the month name of the get current dates, so don't ask me, but the type over here doesn't work on the, on the calc dialog of the custom function. Don't ask me why. It doesn't work. You know the type over, right? It doesn't work. You need to use this, right? But after that, I'm going to show you what I do for this, okay? All right. So now it's the month name or get plan date plus, and then I have something that comes from outside, something as a user, as a developer, I'm going to decide where that comes, okay? The number of days, number of days. This number of days, this is something I'm going to decide while I'm going to use the custom function, right? So I'm putting this here, my cursor here. I, I, I name my parameter, function parameter. I name it. I'm adding it here. So I click the plus here. So let's do it again. Uh, number of days. So first, 
I want to show you how I'm naming those function parameters, right? You name it camel case. This is proper, proper case. We call that proper case. This is camel case. So our, Okay, Cam camel, as in like camel. A, Camel, as, like as a, in like a four-legged thing that's not a horse. Yes. Right. A okay. camel. So a why camel? camel? Okay. No. Because you name like this. You start small, and for each uh, word, you put a you put a what's the name a, a, a capital character, but you start small. That's why we 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 call we call that camel. Because it starts small, it starts flat, and then you have one, two, two, three, four. For each word, you type a character, but you don't start. Uh, you you type a, a capital character, but you don't start with one. That's the camel case. Okay. So here you use proper case. You start with a, character, a capital character, and for each word you name it, you put you you put a capital character. But here you use a camel case, right? So now that I, I, I put the function parameter here, I name it, I need to click plus, okay? So here I have this now. And I can click here where I want to insert this here. And now I double click here, boom. Right? So you, let's do it again. You name your function parameter, you click plus, when it's there in the list, you put your cursor here and you double click. Or if you want, you can type it manually, but okay. Uh, I prefer not doing this because sometimes you can do something like this, you don't see it, right? And it doesn't work, okay? So double click, boom. So now I have my custom function ready to be used, right? So now I have my get terms month custom function. I go there in data viewer, and I go to watch, and then here I can test my function. I can test whatever I want, okay? So I'm going to call my custom function. So the custom function, let me get rid of this. Custom function are here, custom. And my get terms month will appear here somewhere, here. This is the custom function. You have all your custom function in custom here. Get terms month. Of course, now that I am I'm outside the get the custom function calculation, I can call it get terms month. Now I'm going to insert that function, which is a custom function, here. And here now it's asking me the number of days that this custom function needs to work, right? So I can put 10, I can put 200, right? Or I can put number of days, I can call a field. So this can be anything. The, the, this uh, this uh, number of days, Right, can be anything that it's available that are available that is available to me in a calculation. Can be uh, like thirty plus fifty. I can it can be can be whatever you want. Can be number of days minus thirty, for example. You can do whatever you want. Okay, that means this can be a calc. This can be a formula. This can be whatever you want. Okay? So that's why the custom function is cool now because I can call it anywhere I want. For example, here I have 
the month due, okay? So let's change this and put the get terms month and the number of days is this, right? Right? So I change this as a custom function. Let's go here in my set field and I'll get rid of this, right? And I say get terms, right? And I put 30 manually. I input this manually, right? So I can put, and it works, right? So let's get rid of this, right? If I put 150 here, month due works, and here, other month works. So the custom function now, so and you understand now, it's easier to read, right? You don't have all the blah, 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 month name of get current date. You know, you don't have those things anymore to read. It's easy to read, right? So, yeah, I think you have a question, Rick. Yeah, well, it just, it's also, there's a big performance boost from this. You want to talk about the three engines? Yes. Briefly talk about the three engines thing or no? Yes, exactly. So when you are uh, in that level, of the when you hear, you pretty much you're like an, an engineer sitting down at uh, I don't know where uh, Clarice is is, sit, is located now, but you pretty much down in uh, in Santa Clara where yeah sunny technically there's Sunnyvale California Sunnyvale sunny, yeah. okay you're down in Sunnyvale California, and you are writing FileMaker Pro. This is what this is a crack. This is a crack that you can improve FileMaker Pro pretty much when you do a custom function, right? You could say, okay, it's not the 20.3.1.31, it's 32 because you improved it. Okay. You made an improvement of Clarice FileMaker Pro. You, you, you improved it, right? When you do this. Because you are at that level, you are on the on the, on the database engine level, which is the the most is the the the, the engine. Uh, you know, you down down the engine like of the 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 Titanic engine. You down, you know, you down to the engine, and that the most powerful, uh, the, the 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 fastest. You have three engines. Okay, so let me explain. Yeah, yeah. So real real quick, everyone. Yeah. So just so you know that those of you who who support the channel and purchase our paid training there's a video in there that nick created called the three engines right and it's in our paid video training he's going to kind of cover it loosely right now but there's three main core mm, processing areas within the filemaker world and while claris tries to make each one of those faster there are three of them and the fastest one i think is the is it the custom function engine is that the fastest one nick is that the, uh, the custom function? The custom function is the database engine. Okay. Okay. As opposed, so, so, go ahead, so go ahead and explain all three. All right. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. So we have three engines. So the, the, the concept of FileMaker was this. At the beginning, FileMaker okay. name was the name was Nutshell. That was the name of FileMaker before FileMaker. It was Nutshell. It was a DOS, uh, a, a Microsoft DOS, IBM. Our compatible IBM uh, program. It was just a database, uh, you know, listing list of things. You know, it was a, like a, a super Excel, right? That was at the beginning. And then, because we didn't have computer in 1976, something like this, when when this happened, you know, the nutshell. So we didn't have any graphical interface that wasn't existing yet. So then. Uh, Steve Jobs came with the Mac with the Macintosh and the first graphical interface, right? And then those people, the three guys that invented file nutshell, said, "Oh, that would be a good idea, right? To to put Mac draw um, at at the beginning Mac Paint. They were putting Mac Paint on top of." Uh, the nutshell, on top of the database engine. 
to, to have a graphical interface with the possibility to have fields. And at the beginning, we, are, we had squared, you know, we had uh, square, uh, you know, like this. And we oh, had the basic, it's Mac, all the Mac draw. Uh, Mac yeah, draw, Mac, yeah. Mac draw, yeah. All, the, all the basic drawing, yeah. Yeah, draw. And we had, at the beginning, we had the, the famous um, Mac patterns, you know, the dots, the, the stars, the, the, the stripe, yeah, the, you know. The, okay. the, the fill patterns. The, the, yeah, the, the fill, fill patterns. patterns. Yeah. Yep, yep. But we, we, we had this, you know, the border. Uh, we, we had all those things at the beginning, but, but also we had the possibility to, to write text and to see the data as a field, a graphical field. That was the idea. So, the second engine, so the first engine is a database engine. The second, the second engine is the drawing engine. We, we change over the years. It start with the, a bitmap draw, drawing engine at the, at the beginning. Then uh, it changed with our vector our engine with uh, FileMaker 12, right? And uh, we were an engine that was HTML based, right? So it, it, it added some possibility that we didn't have before, right? So that the, the, the second engine, the drawing engine, okay? And then we had a third engine that, that has been added on FileMaker Pro 1.0, okay? Because at the beginning we had FileMaker, then we had we had FileMaker 2, that was the first FileMaker. FileMaker 2, FileMaker 4, two like uh, two like uh, you know Roman, because that was the uh, the Mac world. You know we, we had the Mac the Macintosh 2, and then the Macintosh 2 um, uh, FX, yep. and then the CI yep. and the CX. So it was a lot of Macintosh 2 something, SI, I, I got a SI. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, and so FileMaker was FileMaker 2, like this. And then they changed to FileMaker 4, and then they had a FileMaker 1.0. This is the first with the scripts, uh, with scripting, okay? That, I don't remember what the name was at the beginning. Uh, uh, it was a workspace, it was something else. It's uh, ScriptMaker. Scriptmaker, yeah. So the script here, right? It's a third engine that is on top of the drawing engine, which is on top of the drawing of the database engine to make it simple. The lowest, the lowest engine, the, the fastest engine is the database engine. So how we can see the database engine? This is the database engine. Okay. This, when you go manage database, you are in the database engine. This is database engine. And the, the custom function, it's pretty much a window. It's a window of the database engine, but it's the same. It's at the same level, okay? The, the drawing engine, right? Uh, it's on top of the database engine because I can see I can put fields, right? So I can, I can uh, get fields and get there. Also, I can draw a button that call a script, right? Call a script. That's what I can do. So you draw a button that calls scripts. And within scripts, I can call fields that are in the database engine, right? And I can say, go to layouts and call a layout, which is on the drawing engine, right? To, to make it simpler, it's much more complicated than that, right? You got it, right? But- well, I, I, I keep going. You're good, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the, this is the free engine, but the fastest engine, is the is the database engine? We we calculate that in nanosecond, in a mil, a millionth of a second, nanosecond. Okay, nanosecond. Okay. When the script engine, the script engine, we measure it 
in millisecond gets uh, right in millisecond millisecond so it's thousand time less faster right right less fast so so the, you don't when you when you are in the in the script engine you you're not as fast as if you were in the database engine also you know again i'm making simpler to for the people to understand okay that is always good to go to the lowest level possible if yeah. you want if you want performance yeah the right? scripts and, and of course claris has improved some of the caching and things with scripts in the last release that the, the 20.3 release but fundamentally um these layers that claris filemaker incorporate apple has put on top of this every layer that you have to go through slows it down right so scripting is an engine that runs on top and it will be always slower uh, at some point, like at Margaret's level, like at the Larry level, I don't know that you really worry about that because most of your scripts will probably be plenty fast. But as you get to become a, a legitimate, like senior, senior developer, then you start to worry about scale, what we call scalability, right? So yeah, that's where this comes in. Yeah, and that's the reason why on, on server, you can restart the script engine. That means on server you have the ability to restart the script engine. That means you have a you have a, a, a server running, you have the database started, right? Uh, it's shared, but you have something happen on the scripting because that happens sometimes. You can just restart the script engine, so you don't shut down your your file, but the script all the script running on that server are killed, right? So you restart the engine. So that's why you can do it because the engine is something separated. Something else on server, I know that is not on the certification, but everything that is scripting and database IOs and all of this is optimized compared to the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, you know, sharing uh, things, right? Yeah, the performance stuff is generally not on the, well, historically was never on the certification and on the current, once again, I'm going through their current server certifications availability. Performance is not their top concern. I think they're trying to get people hopefully just to the intermediate level, right? And performance yeah. conversation comes from, you know, after you've been doing this for a number of years and you start running into issues where, listen, if your customers come to you or you're coming to yourself and you're watching your pro, uh, dialogue spin beach ball, you know, you press a button and 10, 11, 20, 30 seconds goes by, then the performance becomes an issue. But that's, you know, down the road a little bit. Yeah, exactly. No question about custom function? I can continue? Uh, yeah, you're good at the moment. So Okay. So now you know the benefits of this. Why are this... Uh, the custom function are useful. Okay, so now I want to uh, I want to show you some of them, what of what you can do. Okay, so for example, um, I use the custom function like this one, right? Right. So what I'm doing here, I want to know the the size of my database, but this is what FileMaker gives me. Right. Okay. What is this? That's right? a that's a what we call a turd. Okay. So I don't know what it is. So what I want is something humanly and understandable. I call that bytes. This is the size of my database. Right? And it's the right size. That means the, I have a custom function that I don't have par parameters that I don't need. It's just a, a file size, but I have all those things going on. And then I have a let function as well. Okay. So uh, I have the, I get the file size, and then I'm doing a conversion for kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and after that, I stop, okay? So, uh, so when it's kilobytes, that means when there, you know, when, when this happened, uh, I have this, right? So I'm doing the round divided by 1024, and that is the kilobyte. 
for megabytes, this is a run, a run of this, right? And then I have this, right? I'm, I'm divided by uh, this number, and this is megabyte. This is to get the gigabyte, and this is to get the terabyte. I got this uh, table of conversion from engineers at Pharmaco when I was working there, right? So this is this is right thing. You cannot say, oh, file divided by thousand or ten or one million or ten million. No, no, no. It's not, right? This is what you need to do, right? And then you have a case function that says is the file size is less than if 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 the if what return is what this return is less than 2024, 1024. That means I want to see the bytes. I want to see the number. Otherwise, I want to see the kilobytes, the megabytes, and the gigabytes. At the end, you know, if not, show me the terabytes. So that will do the conversion. All right. Okay. I'm going to interrupt. I'm going to interrupt. Don't, oh, don't close that. Okay. Oh, which Go one? back. Uh, All right. So here we go. So some of you are probably thinking about this question. I am, I'm, I'm, I am, I am channeling, trying to channel Vulcan yeah. mind melding with Larry, the Marine. Uh, Larry Marine is thinking about chewing on red crayons, but he's also thinking about, well, what if I had a bunch of container or external container data? Is this going to show me that? So we should probably take that custom function and duplicate it, Nick. Why you want to do it if, you, if I've done it? If you've done it already? Well, I don't yeah. know. I, I have no idea if you've done it. I'm, I'm channeling Larry, the Marine, not you. If I was in your head... All hell would break loose, Nick. <laughs> what do we got? So okay, I have it. So right, let's show uh, me. yeah yeah show, show you. So let's 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 get a container. So if you have comments about live streams or comments about certification, whatever you want to shoot us an email, just shoot us an email. Some of you are asking ideas, things like that. We appreciate all the because Margaret gets it, and then it gets kicked to me sometimes, and we appreciate all that. So. Container size, okay? Yep. So to get the container size, normally, this is a real calculation, you know? Get container attributes, mm -hmm. you point to the fields, mm -hmm. and this is the file size, mm -hmm. okay? So here, if you put this here, file size, mm -hmm. And if you, I don't know what we can put here. No, I put a PDF. Ah. All right, here we go. So, this is what ah. you get. Okay, that's 50 megs, I think, maybe. I don't yeah, know. It's something like, I don't know. Uh, we don't know, right? So I wrote for you a custom function that called this, mm -hmm. right? Call a container, a byte size container. And then I'm pointing to the container, right? And then I do it again. Oh yeah, because it's an you have it set as an auto enter calc. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. So it wasn't megs; it was a k k bytes, yeah, okay, kilobytes. One. Yeah. All right. Now, if it's stored now, back now, go back into your file size. If it's stored internally versus externally, okay. So here I can explain the difference. Yes, please. The icon. I don't have this. I don't have the metadata. You know, the on. You know, it's is smaller on the on the. It's it's smaller, but by by little by nothing, right? It's because I don't have when you drag in FileMaker, you 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 have stuff that you don't need. All the OS crap that you need. Um, all the metadata, like the yes, yes, you don't, yeah. you don't get, you, you don't okay. get this, okay. So that's the difference. Okay. But but it's very, it's very, it's very, it's very like subtle, right? Final. It's uh, okay. I don't, uh, yeah, it's I don't know if I have a better, a bigger one. Uh, yeah, I have this one. Okay, so mm. it's one point fourteen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and here it says, but on window we see it's like. One dot uh, nineteen, so I have a like five bytes difference. Yeah. Right. Okay. Th that is because the OS is doing stuff. I I don't you know all those 
thing that the sure. OS needs, you know, so inside the file to wrap the file and, you know, so, so I don't have those when it's here, right? So okay. that's the difference, okay? Okay. So, but it's pretty accurate, right? As you can see. And it changed from megabytes to kilobyte automatically, right? Right? Uh-huh. I have because, an, I I'm on this topic of this question. So is there a way, is there a get function that gives you all the total size of all your, I mean, you have a get function that gives your file size. If your containers are externally stored. We don't care. It, it gets the size. That's why FileMaker gets, okay. Why FileMaker invented those get container attributes. Right. Okay. Gets container attributes mm -hmm. is to to make sure that we overcome those problems like for example uh file name if you do if you if you are if you have an external container mm -hmm. right and you you get the name of this and you and you just do this like we used to yeah you have a bunch of crap before this. You have two, you have three values. The first is remote column or, se or semicolon, and then the name of the file. You know, it's, it, do, it, it puts some crap. You see, if you want, I can show you. Yeah, let, I can show yeah, you. Just put all. You put yeah, all in yeah. there, and it'll get you yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but uh, this is not shared on, on server. So I need to open oh. something shared on server. Uh, let put, oh, let's put, let's. Uh, let's go there. Uh, uh, where? Um, let's let's go to my server. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so let's let's take this. That's the thing from yesterday. So from last week. So let's let's put a container here and do the same. Okay. By the way, Margaret, can you ask if anyone's finding interest in this? Because it seems to me that container management's a big deal and kind of getting your I yeah, have wrapped can, around yeah. the size of this is useful, Margaret. Uh, yeah, I think people are interested. Uh, okay, I, so David's talking about byte conversion and things like that. So yeah, so if you get this this container now, if I if I do this, and I I just go and call the container, this is what I have. Okay. But if I say that I want this container external. Yep. Uh, open storage, right? Sure. So now it's external. Okay. So it's going to ask me to go to chain and yep. transfer. That would be fast. I have only one. Okay. Yep. Now look what I have here. Yeah. They put a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah. So you have the remote. You have this, 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 and this. Right? So we, if you call the name, Right, it will it will put this as a name, all this, and you cannot say, oh, I want the get value of this and this because you have this freaking remote, mm -hmm. and you don't want to to do the get position of the no. That's why FileMaker did the get container attributes, right, and mm -hmm. then you point to the container and you say, oh, I want the file's name. Yeah. File, uh, yeah, file name. File name. There Boom. You, you have the file name. Before you and I, we knew FileMaker, we just do this mm -hmm. and we got the name, but not anymore when it's remote. And then you have also the file size, right? Mm -hmm. The file size. You can just extract the file size, right? Uh, if I can write correctly, right? The file size. And then you can do the conversion, right? And then you do, and you drop your custom. Well, you put the custom function in here. Yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah it's not a exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's what we have. But you can so the custom function to get back to the custom function. The custom function is: Do you do you want to have each time you want to convert numbers, right? Each time you want to convert number, you want to write this each time. That you want to use that you want to write now. You have a custom function that, that is there, and you call it and you use it. And I have another one, the bad size number. 
um, right? Where you can just put the number you want. You know, uh, you don't, you can, you can call because the bytes, what I call bytes, it, it's the size of the file. Mm -hmm. The 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 uh, bytes uh, container, you need to call a container, and you have the byte the byte size number. You can just put whatever you want. You put the number. You understand? Yep. yep. Right. Yep. See, it changed megabytes, terabytes, and then it stops. At, you know, if you have this yeah. terabyte, you know, uh, FileMaker cannot cannot use that terabyte stuff. So, uh, so, 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 so you understand? I have three version of the same function, right? Yep. And I have the same for our, the 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 this one, minimize large number. So that was another another very interesting. Right, and I know you'll use it. You're going to steal it, I'm sure. What is this? Is doing this. <laughs> that one I don't have, but uh, I'll be stealing that right away. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be taking that right away. Thank you. Hundred K, <laughs> you know. So, uh, and you can you can cool. Okay, here I have a here. I have a bug in this function, <gasps> and then, uh, yeah, and I, I mean, it, that's something I I want to ch to change for a long time, and I'm going to do, and I'm going to explain why. B, you need to be very um, uh, accurate in how you name your function, and how, and especially how you name their parameters. This is not a field. This is data. Why? So you can change. So here, how you change uh, 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 parameters in your function. Okay. You click here. You type here. You select this and you change it. You say data, and then you ch you click on the stencil here. Right. Okay. And then you boom. But now it's not done. I'm calling field. It was field here. I'm yeah, calling him here. I yeah, need I to change that. this. Yeah, I got to fix that. Okay. Why data and not field? Because it can be anything. The, the minimize ah. can be uh, this, right? Mm. Can be a field. Can be a number. Oh, okay. Can be a calc, right? So it's data. It's not a field. It's not a function. It's not. It's it's a data, and it's not a number neither, because this is not a number. This is a calc. So it can be a calc. It can be a, a field. It can be anything. Another function, right? I can I can say okay get uh, whatever I want right you, you know what I mean so it can be anything so uh, that's why um, you when you name your function you need to be very accurate in how you name those parameters here right sometimes you say okay field that means you you give to you the user the indication you need to point that to a field or you want something more accurate, like a, a number of something, like I like I've done here, you know. So here, uh, it's on on the container. It needs to be a container. If it's not a container, because I'm saying get container attributes. So if I don't point to a container field, this will not never work. It will return question mark, mm. right? So that's why I put container. I put the accurate precision. Okay. Oh, of what you're he, expecting. Okay. Yeah. Here it's a number. It needs to be a number. So it cannot be a field. It, it can be a field, but it, it's not a field. It's a number that can be anything, mm -hmm. but it needs to be a number. Otherwise, it won't work. If you put ABC here, it won't work. It will return question mark. You have no idea what, what you ask for, right? If I, if I, if I do this, 
you know, uh, bytes uh, number, right? And I put a, a, B, C, D, this is what I get. Yeah. Uh, it has no idea. It needs to be a number. But it could be a number from a calcul from a field, from a calculation, but it's a number. I won't give the, the accuracy. Now, here, in, the, in, in this here, right, is data. You know, can be anything. It's data. So, uh, so you need to be uh, like a get quick number. This one is cool, by the way. Um, so I have plenty. I have plenty of good function here. But I'm going to now. I wanted to explain to the people how to build its your own custom function before we we go work through some of mine that I'm using all the time. Well, right? we are yeah. we are we are running out of time, unfortunately, yes. Nick. Right? Keep that yeah. in mind. So yes. Yeah. But no, you. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, it's my but, fault. I'm here asking questions. No, it's okay. But you know, we we have the uh, the, the get extension. Uh, um, uh, we have many many cool things. But I, I want to show you how you can use this in different uh, um, situation, real world situation, right? Uh, like the like the time frame, uh, the range, the code. You know, like uh, this is cool because I'm using a while function here. Uh, so somebody I don't remember who asked for a let function. Of course, we can have a let function, right? And tomorrow I'm going to explain to you how I'm building something like this, but not in that uh, dialogue because that dialogue is a pain in the butt because we don't have the type over, mm. right? We don't have so you know we don't have like this. We don't have this. I want the type over. To build okay. my my function, so I'm going to show you tomorrow how I build this, how how I'm testing it, and then and then how I'm transferring that prototype of function, and I'm building a custom function out of it. All right, Margaret. Questions we have as we are landing the plane. Is your captain speaking? We're gonna be landing momentarily. <laughs> uh, people approve of the detours. Uh, Larry was asking if you were asking about the total of you, Dad. We're asking about the total size of external storage plus the database. Yeah, I well, I yeah, obviously the database could give you the one. Then you need the total size of all the external. I te technically, I guess you could write your own calc on every record and then total it up with a summary or something. I guess. Yeah, that, 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 the only, that the only way to do that anyway. So. Oh, okay, I'm just <laughs> okay. Well, that was the way that occurred to me, um, but uh, yeah. So Larry, did I answer that question? So you do. What Nick did here, um, I guess I could try to annotate. You do of this over here, but then you then you are gonna. No, no. Well, yeah, no. I, I can tell you how you, how you do it. You you get, no no, I, I tell you how you do it. You get the container size, or no, or this is the I call that container size converted. Okay, I I I build it for you and and uh. You know, this is a converted, and this is a container size natural. That means is this is the container size not from my custom function, the get container attributes on the on the container, and then the file size. Okay, so yeah, that's what yeah. we want. Okay, yeah. so now we have those. <laughs> Thank you for messing up my layout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, you, you, this is what starts happening at 2 o'clock when we all get tired of this. Like, okay, here we go. Okay, so you have this. So now you have this. You do a summary. Mm -hmm. okay, there you, you go. Uh, you do a, a, a total of a to, yeah. uh, total, total. of uh, size, container size. Mm -hmm. Why cannot container size? So this is a total of. So it's a container. Uh, it's a summary, sorry. Yep, yep. It's yep. a summary, and it's a total of. Uh, oh, it's not a number. D this need to be a number. Otherwise, this cannot do, the the summary. Okay, so okay. real real quick, Larry. Yeah. This is it's gonna Nick keep going here. This would be no, really it'd be really yeah. slow generally. So what I would do is you would put these fields on a layout that you would access verse with PSOS and you'd have the server. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Of do course. Do it for you. Yeah. That way it's uh yeah. So. But it's this is how you get the total. Mm -hmm. And then and then, okay, you do 
a conversion of our, you know, total of converted, okay? This is how I name my stuff. And uh, no, it's not a summary. It's a, it's a text, mm. right? And I do this. That's why I invented this. The bytes size number. Yep. And I call this the total of container size. Mm. And then I'm getting, so I can, I can show you it works. So you have, you know, so if I do this, uh, total, total, so I have my two totals here. Mm. So, right? Yeah. But if I add a new one, let's add a bigger one. Yeah, you need yeah this one bigger. is big. Yeah. Uh, okay. But it needs to be triggered. Okay, so how you how you trigger this? Go to, two minutes, two minutes. How you trigger this? It didn't trigger. Yeah, the, the, it okay. didn't refresh. I will right? do it. You yes, look. No, you, keep going. It, no, it, yeah, you go. Oh first, oh, first I need this. I think yeah, this is that's, yeah, that'll I, I, probably yeah. fix it. That'll probably fix yeah. it. Try again. There you go. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So um, so let me delete this record. So if I if I keep going, yeah. So let's put a. Let's put the same another one another time. Boom, two thirty-five. So you you added this and this and this. So you 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 get the size for each one. You do a total of this, and then you convert the total based on this. Okay. So uh, Pat, the last comment for today is that keep in mind that this works great with like eight records and one user. Yeah, yeah. Of course. As soon as you have. Thousands, 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 and lots of users. This is going to be a little stopwatch. It's like a little recycle icon that spins on your computer and nothing happens. So this gets moved to its own layout somewhere else on a different layout up here. Then you're going to call a script, which will tell the server to PSOS. It's going to go to that layout, get calculate the total, then bring it back and stick it in some sort of... Um, can't be a global field or a variable, but it'll have to be some yeah. some number like in a preference table that you drop it in there. So it's done for you, right? Yeah. Um, you know, is, I, I will put that in another, in another table. I will create a table for that with a record and uh, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right. There we go. So any other questions? See what happens when I'm with Nick. I'm like, I'm like, hey, Nick, tell us how this other <laughs> works. So yeah. Pretty good. Other questions from anyone? Margaret. Uh, yes. Is it a bad idea to use custom functions for things like curl commands, API authorizations, credentials, SMPT, email server credentials? Uh, uh, you can uh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you as, know, long as, not, it, as long as it lives within a calculation, right? Yes. That's the essential yeah. part. Yeah. So some of those things might be scripts that are running. And so if you wanted to maximum performance, the script would run and that any complex calculations would get the, the calculation would run through the custom function. Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. So and it, can, it could be something like this. It could be things that are a little bit whoa, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you can go, it, it doesn't have to be simple. It can be, uh, you know, you can have uh, things, uh, you know, but it's the, the, the trigger, the, the decision maker, why you need a custom function is because first you need something you need to get it again and again and again and again and again and secondly you want to simplify something like for example uh the get this one the get parameter value this is super simple it's super simple right what it is now is nothing but it was pain in the butt always to to do this combination of get value get three parameter i don't want that i won't want Get yeah. value, boom, right? That's it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so you want to simplify something, right? All or, right. You can, or you can get, since I'm, I'm here, but tomorrow I'm going back, uh, you can get, uh, you know, uh, something like this, you know, uh, the, the op, the, from an object. And, oh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. You said tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yes, yeah. tomorrow. So, okay, yeah. cool. In that case, we will see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and return back for part two. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.
enough. Got a report of an individual up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 